Identity matters. First of all, identity is a social construct. There is a direct correlation between Israel, which is Abraham's seed, and those which are Christ. With cheap substitutes, that's that's what sin is. Sin is a cheap substitute. Those temptations are cheap substitutes. Grace's function is a shield of protection, a protective force, because there's something on the inside of us that we have that the Most High is invested in. We just open our hearts to God and ask Him to just clean us up, fix us up. Thy will must be done. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat yeah, Shalom. Yeah. One more time with the Father, with Yah. Amen. Amen. Mm-hmm. One more opportunity. One more yep. opportunity. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I see, see the family coming in. Hallelujah. Uh, Amen. We're missing our brother today, but uh, he's with us spiritually. I'm sure he's in prayer with us. But uh, we got Yah. Huh? And that says it all. So anyway, we're looking for another good one, another good lesson, good discussion. And so let's go ahead and get this thing on the road. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Family, Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom for those that are coming in. It is a beautiful Shabbat day here in this, uh, here in Texas. And uh, just uh, grateful for another opportunity to, to gather and to see our family coming in. It's truly a blessing. We are... Uh, we are truly honored to have another opportunity to gather on the Shabbat. You know, I think my my sister said it very perfectly here. Uh, let me find it right here. Uh, we have a wonderful another opportunity to be glad and to gather together on this wonderful, wonderful Sabbath gathering. That, I mean, gathering. That, that's what we have here. We have a wonderful opportunity to engage with the family and we're excited. We're excited about what y'all is doing. Um, we are, there's so much going on. Uh, we'll talk briefly about some of the administrative things that are happening uh, towards the end of the stream today, but we're just grateful uh, that Yah is uh, allowing us to, uh, to be used to uh, bring uh, light and truth and love to Yah's people, because uh, that's what we're called to do. We're called to love on our uh, spiritual family. And uh, please, if there's anything we can do to support, uh, let us know, Uh, drop in the chat uh, what those prayer requests are. You know, we've had a few of our uh, spiritual sisters that have gone through uh, some recent surgeries and are in recovery and we're continuing to pray and we're grateful that the Most High is bringing health and healing to the family. And if you need prayer, if you need prayer, please let us know in the chat, allow the family Allow the family of faith to, to drop uh, prayer requests and, and and let us pray for you. Let us pray for you. We'll definitely uh, do that and, you know, support in any way that we possibly can. Amen. So we're, uh, we're we're grateful, family. Uh, you know, last week was such a blessing uh, to, to share with the family. Uh, it was truly edifying as we talked about, you know, uh, some of these signs and seasons that are going on right now and some of the things that we have to uh be ready for you know the 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 basura of yeshua hamashiach declares to us that we have to be ready we have to stay ready because we're living in uh in trying times we're living in trying times we're going to talk a little bit about that today um about the times in which we live in what we're called to be uh, and who we're called to um, to represent in this time, family. So looking forward to uh, prayerfully an edifying uh, conversation, uh, really desiring to engage with our family in the chat around these, uh, these matters today. But the most important thing is that uh, uh, the Most High's name be lifted up and that the people are being blessed. And so we're grateful for that. Um, we're going to prepare to open up in prayer. And as we do that, we pray if you're in a position that you bow your head and bow your heart with us. Uh, if you haven't already done so coming in, uh, drop a like on this stream, uh, share this stream with those who, who might, uh, who may need to, to hear a word of truth, 
uh, like the one that uh, we're going to speak forth today. So, again, thank you for being with us, and let's go before the Father in prayer, and let's uh, let's ask him to come into this place. Let's invite, let's welcome him in in his set-apart spirit. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you so much for the opportunity to gather here on this Shabbat day. Thank you for our family of, of faith, our fellow Hebrew brothers and sisters. We are so grateful that Israel is being gathered in these latter days and the times in which we live in. Father, there is so much that you have in store for your people, but we must be in covenant relationship with you. And that happens through Yeshua HaMashiach. That happens through our Messiah, our King, our returning King, Yeshua, uh, who is our hope, our blessed hope. And we're grateful that you have given us the avenue to engage with you in a very deep and intimate way. Father, I pray that today's discussion be edifying. I pray that it be um, uh, a word of, of, uh, of edification, a word of knowledge. Uh, and I pray that we take this word and that we allow your set apart spirit to allow this word to cultivate within our minds, within our hearts and within our spirits. Father, we thank you for the gathering. We thank you for 2444 Ready Ministries and all of those that we are connected to, whether it's live on demand, uh, ministry partners, uh, those that are providing support. Uh, we thank you so much uh, for everything that you're doing in Israel uh, through this ministry. Father, we bless you and honor you and ask all these things to be sealed and done in the name of our Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. So be it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, family. So we're again grateful uh, for another opportunity. We're going to prepare to jump right in. Uh, and so, family, we are uh, we are so, so near. <laughs> so near to the set apart feast days commanded by our Yah. And so as we've been doing the last few months, we want to keep everyone uh, updated with the specific dates uh, that we specifically here at 2444 Ready Ministries uh, will be keeping uh, in alignment with Yah's, uh, Yah's uh, desire as laid out in Torah. So as we know, we have entered the month of Aviv. We are in that first Hebrew month. So top of the year to our family in the faith. It is a new year. We're grateful for that. Mm. This, you know, I'll be honest with you, Dad. I've been just kind of uh, falling asleep on my on my back porch. <laughs> the weather's beautiful. Uh, yeah. It just feels mm. really nice to be outside right now. It's a huge blessing. It's the it's a new year, and we're grateful for that. So we um, are just excited about the things that come forth. We know that we're nearing uh, the day of preparation, the 10th day of this month. And as we prepare the lambs and as we get ready for uh, Pesach or Passover, we know there's some uh, all sorts of things that we need to do. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that today on the stream as well. But as we know, Unleavened Bread is right around the corner. Uh, Pesach or Passover is right around the corner. First fruits around the corner. That's so, so much to be looking forward to. So we continue to be grateful and thankful for uh, Yah set apart days for his people, Israel. So here at 2444 Reddit Ministries, we do honor the set apart days that are commanded by our father. And so we pray wherever you are that you're able to make preparation as well. And so the days are there for you. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the websites, the updated websites readiness at the end of the stream today. But please know, family, that uh, this is what we want you to see and we want you to know. We want you to be in the know so that we can all be in alignment. So all praises to Yah for what he's doing uh, in the kingdom of Israel. So, family, we have dropped into the chat. Uh, the link, if you want to come up and share some of your thoughts live, there's going to be opportunities. I can I can assure you that today with some of the things that we're going to discuss um, it's going to, I'm sure, bring up some uh, 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 it, it might it might uh, uh, bring out some ideas or some thoughts that you might have on this topic, because I know this is something that's been been weighing on um, weighing on my heart and I could not wait to come today to share this with the people. So let's prepare family to get into uh, some of the things today. 
So you might have saw the stream today, um, likeness and image. Uh, tough decisions are coming. <laughs> tough decisions are coming, Israel. Uh, if you believe that and you're here with us live, just put a man in the chat. If, if you believe that tough decisions are coming, that we have tough decisions that are going to have to be made um, re regarding how we live our life, regarding who we um, who we associate with, uh, how we share and spread the good news of Yeshua HaMashiach uh, is going to require uh, some things of us. So I'm going to put that out there right now that family, we have to start preparing. And, and you might say, well, why are we having this conversation now? Well, let's 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 put this conversation today into context. We right now, as a Hebrew family, as a Israel, as, as part of the covenant of Israel, we must, we are commanded to make preparations for the season that we're in. We are commanded to stay in a state of readiness. We talked about this on last week. We are commanded to evaluate the state of our lives and the state of the world around us and how we engage that world around us. And we are required to make decisions. We are not allowed in this faith. We are not allowed to sit on the fence. We are not allowed to have one foot in <laughs> and one foot out. We are not allowed, it is not permissible of our Yah for his children not to be set apart. Set apart means that you got to make a decision. <laughs> and so what I'm sharing with us family today, and this has been, been heavy on my mind. Matter of fact, let me share what kind of sparked this. I had a faithful friend send this to to me and uh and some 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 friends and ever since then i i can't stop and i couldn't stop thinking about it and it was just a phrase and the what was sent was coming out of colossians chapter two i'm sorry colossians chapter three verse number two i'm going to read it from from my phone where it says Colossians 3, chapter 2, it talks about setting your mind on things above. And then the phrase or the, the thought for reflection talked about, and I'm going to read it verbatim. It says, frisk your thoughts, check them against the truth of Yah's word. And that phrase, frisk your thoughts, I, I've been thinking about that for, for some days now. And when, when I say fricks, like we know when somebody's you get patted down, y'all y'all know like if if you if you uh, come under the under the arrest of I guess a law officer, an enforcement officer, and you get frisked because they want to see what's going on with you. <laughs> they want to make sure that you're not uh, concealing anything, so they're they're trying to make sure that they know exactly what you're holding before they move forward. So they they frisk you. And so I was thinking about my own thoughts and I was saying, you know what? There are some things within my mind with that I have that that I'm that I need to get rid of number 1, but I'm I'm talking I'm thinking as I'm processing uh me frisking my thoughts. I'm having these different word pictures and different images that come into my mind. I said, you know what? I need to get this stuff out of here. I'm thinking about preparation as necessary, and that is going to require some tough decisions. But I know that I'm not the only one out here that's got to make tough decisions in Israel. <laughs> All of us are going to have to make some tough decisions. Shabbat shalom to you, family. We see that all of you all that are letting us know that you're here in the chat. Blessings uh, to all of you all that are coming in right now in the live and those who are now watching on demand. Hallelujah. So let's talk about really quick. I'm gonna, I want, I'm going to bridge this conversation from last week, and then we're going to jump into some reflection questions, and then we're going to look into um, uh, some passages, and we're going to extrapolate Yah's will for us during this time. I, I, I believe that you're going to have an expectation on today's stream that today's going to be extremely thought-provoking, 
but not just for the sake of being thought provoking. It's going to be thought provoking to lead us to a choice and a decision. Have that expectation that Yah is going to present you and me with options today. And he's going to say, choose this day what you're going to do. Choose whom you're going to serve. Are you going to serve your interest or are you going to serve Yah's interest? That's what we got to ask ourselves today, family. So with that being said, let's jump let me, let me add, let me add my Let me add my testimony into that. Come on. Uh, thank yeah. you for sharing uh, this, this, this lesson and this message. This, this is going to be timely for me for sure because, um, you know, I, I've been through a lot in the last year or so, but uh, I've been thankful, been prayerful, and it's been it's been it's been well. Um, <clears throat> as some of you know, my wife been challenged here lately, but she's doing fine. But this week has been a real challenge. This this past week has been a very very real challenge, um, and I have found myself with the same thing you're talking about right now. I have found myself thinking about putting my thoughts into too much stuff that doesn't matter. I mean, I have, and, and I'll, I'll, I'll ponder over it, and an hour or two later, or maybe the next day, I'm back in the same old rut. That has happened to me literally this week, multiple times. And so I thank God for this lesson, because that is not doing us no good for the kingdom. You're not accomplishing anything. You're not, it just... Y'all, you're mostly wrapped up in self is what it what what it really boils down to, and um, and I'm knowing that I've been praying through it, but uh, victory has been slowly coming, and I think Shabbat Shalom. We got it here today, <laughs> so I thank God for this lesson here today because I think it's gonna really pull me out of that out of that quicksand. You know, you know, you ain't you ain't going under, but you know you're in the quicksand. You know you're in the rut. You know you're in, you know, you're in a place you ain't got no business being. And so I'm just thankful. I'm just thankful for this lesson today. I just want to share that. I just want to put that out there. Oh yeah, man. And look, it don't it don't be a it, man. Look, and it's not just you that all of us can say that we have not allowed. We've not done the true sifting that's necessary within our minds. And to your point about, about spending time and allowing our thoughts to kind of fester in places that don't have anything that will not yield a fruit, a kingdom fruit in any way, shape or form. But we spend time in those places. That's important to, to even recognize that. Because recognition is 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 first. You, you got to recognize that Yah is trying to show you something. You know, he's bringing something to you. But again, we got to make the choice. See, a lot of times we think that the choice is going to be made for us. And that's not going to happen. We have to, within our soul, within our spirit, choose Yah. We have to choose him. But choosing him comes at a cost. And that's what we're talking about today. There are decisions that are going to be made that are going to cost us. They're going to cost us. And let's let's get ready to talk about that. But let's make a quick bridge real quick before we get into this. So last week we talked about signs and seasons and being 24, 44 ready. We were looking at Matthew 24 and we were kind of walking through that piece. We were talking about all of the events that have been taking place over the last couple of weeks. Um, so we talked about the heavenly luminaries. We were talking about the purpose behind the, the heavenly luminaries and how uh, this past solar eclipse gave us an opportunity to get into alignment with the most high and to allow ourselves to be straight, just like a plumb line. And we use that whole uh, concept of a plumb line and, and what its purpose is for Yah's people. And so we talked about, OK, all this stuff going on with the eclipse. And but well, what does all this mean in Israel? Because there was a lot of noise, a lot of things going on there. Right. And so we looked specifically at Amos chapter seven and we looked at Amos's uh, vision that he was given of a plumb line and the purpose behind that plumb line for a people who or who are out of alignment with Yah's will in his way, in his culture, in the needs 
of, of his people, right? And so we talked about the Hebrew function of sign. Remember, we went and talked about, looked it up in the uh, in the Hebrew and talked about how the word sign is the Hebrew term oat. And we talked about what that means, the olive and the tau. We talked about the term season. We talked about how the term mo moed is that term season and what that function, what that means, what it's meant to do, how we're meant to engage uh, Yah during this season during this time. And then we literally got walked through Matthew 24 and all the way literally to verse 44, talking about the importance of being ready, staying ready in this time, right? So those are the things that we talked about on last week. Now, let's get ready to talk about today and why we're having this conversation about these tough decisions, because I'm, I'm putting up on the screen again, an image that we shared on last week, this image of the plumb line. This image of this tool that is meant to keep us in perfect harmony, perfect alignment with Yah. Okay. And that is the purpose of the word of Yah. The word of Yah is a plumb line. We talked about this on last week. So I want today's conversation is in the same spirit of the plumb line. This conversation about tough decisions. See, that in order to get into alignment with Yah, we got to make some decisions because if our ways are crooked, moving them back into alignment is going to cost. It's going to cost. It's going to cost us. And so as I've been reflecting over the last few days, I had to be honest with myself, family. And this is the time to be honest. If you if you're going to be honest about your spiritual state, your 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 mental state right now, this is the time as we're making preparation for his set apart feast. We are, we are called, we are called to make sacrifices as we are leading up to his set apart day. Pesach requires us, think about the first Passover. The first Passover, the children of Israel were told to get into a house take that lamb and eat that lamb in a state of readiness. Now, it doesn't it didn't matter what was going on on the outside. What they were told to do is no matter what's going on the outside, you're to move over here. You're to get in line into alignment with my expectations for you and your family. So, they were told get into alignment and do this and what was the penalty for not getting into an alignment? If you didn't follow his will, if that blood wasn't over the doorpost, immediate and, intim and, and, and imminent consequences were there for whoever. The consequences were there. It wasn't any questions. And so I think sometimes we 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 question whether or not it's supposed to be a certain kind of way. And that's, and that's what we're going to talk about here in just a moment, family. But we, we got to do it his way. We got to get into alignment and we got to make decisions, right? So in the spirit of the plumb line, that's where this is birthing. So that's where we're going. So keep that mental picture. I hope if you can see your screen, you can see this plumb line and you can see how straight it is. Keep that picture in mind as we talk about the decisions and the costs that are going to be associated with getting into alignment. All this is about alignment. This is about alignment to the Father's will and the Father's way. Now, a bit of a strange parallel, but I'm going to make it nonetheless because I think it's one that we can relate to. There was a, a movie that came out some years ago uh, about a man who was uh, who was one of the last, I guess, men on earth. And uh, there was uh, some sort of virus that hit, wiped everybody out and turned any everything that was living into a threat <laughs> to this man's life. And all this man had was himself and his dog every day. If you remember uh, the, the movie, it's called I Am Legend. And this man every single day woke up with his mind set on survival. It was about survival from the time he put his head on his pillow, the time he woke up. He woke up in the morning, he made preparation, 
uh, to go out and try to find a way of sustenance. And it was just him and his dog every day. And so I'm putting this picture up because there is a mindset that we have to realize and, and be in all the time. We are in a war, y'all. We are in a spiritual war and there are demons and there are things that are looking to destroy us. They're looking to destroy our covenant with our Yah through compromise, through uh, through uh, through sin, through lust, through uh, all these different vices that we find ourselves um, tempted to to go into all these pleasurable things that we are, are drawn to from time to time. But we've got to focus, family, as we are making preparation for these days, we got to have a focus and we got to be on all the time. We got to stay in a state of readiness. We got to stay ready. Now, I'm, I'm going to put up some questions for you. And I want I, I need to hear from the people about this. Let's deal with question number one first. And you might say that's a strange question. <laughs> But let me ask a question, family, and, and please either put in the chat and feel free if you like to share your thoughts with the family and come up, join the link uh, in, in the in the chat. Question number one, would our Messiah, Yeshua, be described as a nice guy? So the qu first question on the on, on the floor is, would our Messiah during his day and even right now, do you think people consider Yeshua in his life, the, his recorded life, and during that time, do you think he would have been described as a nice guy? And the second question is, should we be nice in our approach to spreading truth, the truth of Yah, in this day and time? I, I, I need to hear from, from the people. So, uh, Sister Daisy says, no, he wasn't considered nice. Okay. I get it. Yes, he brought salvation to the world. So yes, he was a nice guy. Just want to make, make sure that I'm, I'm clear on, on, on the question. Got a no. Uh, let's see here. Oh, you go, go ahead and put them up, dad. You, you put them up. You put them up. Go back to Brother Wellington's comment and let's start there and kind of march it down. We got no, uh, he would be righteous, not nice. Okay, thoughts on the on this way. Please share your please share your thoughts because this this is priming us for the conversation that we're getting ready to have, and I, I would love to hear your thoughts. I'm actually hoping that we get some uh, family members come up. And share their thoughts with us in the live or be extremely uh, detailed in your comments to, to explain uh, your position specifically aligned with, obviously, the word on this topic. So we've got, uh, let me look at here. It said, okay, he wasn't both, but he was honest above all else. Okay, what else we got? Nope, not a nice guy ready to fight false teachings. <laughs> all right. Not nice, but loving. Are those two synonymous? <laughs> Are those two synonymous? If you, if if you're is is loving nice, and is nice loving. You know what? Let me do this, because I I actually was um I was actually thinking about this. You know, I went and I went and actually uh looked the word up because I said, you know what? If we gonna have this conversation, let let's look up our English understanding of nice, so we are all on the same page. So let me share with you what the dictionary says nice is. So what, do we think that Yeshua was described as pleasant? Do we think that Yeshua was described as agreeable? Do we think that Yeshua was described as satisfactory? Uh, let's, let's look up some other... Uh, Got some other, I guess, adjectives. Do you think that Yeshua was enjoyable, pleasant, agreeable, satisfying, gratifying, delightful? Hmm. Just I'm, I'm just curious, just so we're all on the same page. So let me go back to some of these comments. Uh, he was both. Okay. 
let's see here. No, uh, he he watched he watched asking people to do what they didn't want to do. Okay, he 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 did. He asked people to deny themselves and do a lot of things they didn't want to do. Amen, brother Michael. Uh, a nice guy will never be crucified. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Gotcha, gotcha. What do we have any other comments that okay? No, because he didn't sugarcoat the truth. Hmm. All right. Thank you, my sister. Any other comments before we move forward? We should be respectful, but not nice. Nice would be us caring about others' feelings more than the truth. Well said. Well said. Okay. Uh, Yara Cole says he wasn't considered nice, but he was bold. Why is it a ser serpent and calm as a dove? Praise y'all for the spirit of unity. We're going to get into that. He was offensive to people who didn't love the truth. Okay. You guys ever looked up etymology of the word nice? Hey, you know what's interesting about that, my sister? So do you know that the word nice is not found? In the scriptures, <laughs> did y'all know that? And if you need proof, let me show you. Uh, let me go real quick. Let me let me let me share our screen with you all, family. I'm gonna share. Let's let's look at this. Y'all y'all know here we use the term. Uh, we use the Blue Letter Bible quite frequently. So let me let me use the the two that we're probably most familiar with here. Let me just, and you all see what I'm doing. This is the Blue Letter Bible home screen. I'm just going to type in the word, in the KJV, the term nice. And I want y'all to watch what happens. Y'all see that? <laughs> y'all see that? Occurs zero times in zero verse in the KJV. So the word, because because that, that would be the natural thing to do, my sister. And I appreciate you asking the question. So what is nice? What is nice? How do we define nice? Because the thing about it, and to go back to that whole question, the first question, would Yeshua be considered a nice guy? Is it a good thing to be a nice guy? What are men at on the chat? Talk to me, men. Or maybe uh, uh, our women too, women of y'all too. Is it is it good for a man to be considered or have the reputation of a nice guy? Because that's a question that I asked. Would, would Yeshua have been considered a nice guy? <clears throat> uh, let, let's look at some more of these comments. We're going to address these comments. Oh, yeah. Get, get ready to grab your Bibles, family, because we're about to take a walk uh, in the Gospel of Matthew. So if you're wondering where this is going, I'm telling you right now, we're getting ready to go to the Gospel of Matthew. If you want to grab your Bibles and get ready with me. So let's let's look at some of these comments. Serious but, uh, and, but firm and not compromising. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, love is also correction mm. and say what people need to listen to, even when you will be hated for it. Mm. Okay. Thank you, brother. Loving isn't always nice. <laughs> Messiah tailored his response, response to the people who he was dealing with. So are you saying, Mama C, that because of the times in which Yeshua lived in, he tailored his message to address the people in those times. And who did Yeshua address? He addressed Hebrews. I mean, he, he was moving around talking to Israelites, talking to people who understood Torah uh, during his day. You know, uh, there were some non-Hebrews that would approach him. And he had some pretty interesting things to say to some non-Hebrews. Remember what he said to the, uh, was that the woman who had to, uh, y'all help me out. Y'all can find this. I think it's in Matthew somewhere. Remember the lady that came to him and uh, something was going on uh, with, I think, her, her daughter, if I'm not mistaken. It might have been a Samaritan woman. And he said to her, uh, woman, he, he was like, uh, I'm not going to give to the dogs. <laughs> Come on, somebody know what I'm talking about. He said, I, I, I'm not going to give to the dogs the things that are meant for the children. And then she said something to the fact, well, even the children get the crumbs. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Even the children get the crumbs that fall from the table. I want to say that's in like Matthew 15 or something like that. So he was basically saying like, you approaching me as, as, as a non-Hebrew, I'm not about to give 
um, give the, the, the bread of Israel to the dogs? Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. So I guess I'm going back to this whole notion of like even tailoring the message to the people. That's right. Thank you, Brother Wellington. It's in Matthew chapter seven. If, if somebody can catch that verse and drop it in the chat just for the reference on the on the live stream, that'd be fantastic. Wherever that is in Matthew chapter seven. But getting back to the conversation, getting back to the conversation. This whole term, uh, this whole idea of being nice, being agreeable, being pleasant, um, is, is that something that we need to be aspiring to, particularly as we're making preparation uh, right now, as we're looking at our character, looking at our uh, how we behave, how we interact and engage with Israel and those who are outside of the covenant? How is it, how is it that we are going to approach this matter? Did so, you see this one? Did, did you see this one? <laughs> and he was. He was a table flipper, right? He, <laughs> Yeshua was a table flipper. I don't think when he when, when he came in, into that temple, I don't think nice would be a descriptive word that anybody it, it, that saw that uh, uh, when him, uh, what, what, what did he do that? He, what, didn't he start binding some cords together and made a whip <laughs> and went through that? <laughs> Like, I mean, I can only imagine what flipping over the, the, the money tables. <laughs> I mean, I can only imagine what that scene looked like. I can only imagine. But that's our Messiah. That's our king. Family, that's our king. That's the one that we're told to model our lives after. Hmm. Hmm. Family, let's get ready to get into this word. There you go, Mama C. Thank you for putting that in the in the chat. Um, maybe. Uh, th oh, yeah. So it's it's actually. Uh, we apologize, family. It's Matthew chapter fifteen. Yeah, Matthew chapter fifteen, verse twenty six is where that is. Where where Yeshua had that very uh, interesting response to that woman who approached him and told her that you know what's for the what's for the children is not going to be given to the dogs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Family, let's get ready to turn. Turn with me, if you would, if you have your Bible. Let's go to Matthew chapter number 10. Matthew 10. We're going to look at the 10th division of Matthew, family. And y'all willing, um, uh, if if time permits, Dad, we got to read some Hebrew today. It's, it's been, I feel like it's been a little while. We're going we're gonna to read some Hebrew today. Y'all willing. But let's right now, all family, go to Matthew chapter number 10. Let's go to Matthew 10. I'm going to put it on the screen for you, family. Matthew chapter 10. And again, the whole purpose of this is because we have to align our behaviors. We have to align our mindset to the expectation and will of the father. And the father's will has been given to us through his son, through the word. So we got to take the word, family, and we got to look at it. And we got to ask ourselves, are we in alignment? Amen to that, Brother Michael. <laughs> Amen to that. I, I mean, I, I can't say that. Um, I couldn't have said that any better. <laughs> There's not going to be, he said, there will be no niceties when Yeshua returns. Hallelujah for the return of Messiah Yeshua. Let's look at Matthew chapter 10, family, uh, and let's take a look. I'm going to walk us through, and I just want, I'm going to pause a few places, and I'm just going to ask you to share your thoughts in the chat. And remember, if you have a thought, come on up, share it with us, because I'm of the conviction, after reflecting over this, that there is no room, to your point, Brother Michael, to niceties in Israel. It does not mean we are not to love. It does not mean that we are to not be wise in our approach when it comes to the family of faith, when it comes to those that are outside. But I believe that the father is going to be sifting a lot of our, our, uh, our character. There's some things about our character that we may need to release in order to get into alignment because you won't because if you're trying to be nice, if you have that spirit of being pleasant and agreeable, Remember that 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 was one of the 
uh, descriptive terms to describe nice is agreeable. Like, I'm, but in in the spirit of being agreeable, I'm going to approach things a certain way. Yeshua is showing us here that that ain't his will. <laughs> that ain't his will. But let's look at it together, family, and let's uh, let's learn together. So I'm starting it. I'm gonna start at verse number one. Make it a little larger for those that are reading off of the screen. Hallelujah. All right. So we got Yeshua in this is chapter 10, Matthew 10, verse number one. It says, and when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, he gave them power. OK, so he's getting ready to send them out. He gave them power against unclean spirits. Let me ask you a question, family. Do you think that the 12 apostles, when they went out and they were facing unclean spirits, do you think that their approach was nice? Do, do, do you think that they're when they are when you think you think they're uh, they are addressing these spirits in a in a in an agreeable and pleasant manner? Hmm, I, I'm, I'm not so sure. It says to cast them out and to heal all manners of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. It says, and then they list the names of the apostles. Okay, we got Simon, Peter, Andrew, uh, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Thomas, Matthew, James, Zebedee. That is Simon, Judas, we know. And then he gives him a mission, okay? He gives him a mission. Now watch this. He says, these 12 Yeshua sent forth and commanded them saying, go not into the way of the non-Israelites, the Gentiles. He says, go not in their way and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. So he says, don't you dare. Go the way of the non-Hebrews. Say, don't go, don't, don't go. Does, does that sound very nice? <laughs> but I thought Yeshua was including everybody. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. <laughs> but I thought Yeshua uh, said, uh, go to everybody. Okay. Okay. The, the, these are his words, not mine. It says, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So Yeshua is commanding his apostles. He says, look, go to Israel and share this message, share this hope, share this truth with Israel. Now watch. And as you go, Priest saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He tells, he gives them commands. He says, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Let me go back to the uh, essential question of the day. Do you all think that when these apostles were going into Israel and addressing all of these things, these ailments, the sicknesses, leprosy, raising the dead, casting out devils, do you think the approach was pleasant and agreeable? I'm, I'm trying to get us to see the mindset, the mindset that Yeshua requires of those that are following him and those that are obedient to his commands. Y'all talk to me in the chat. Whoa, whoa, dad, the chat done got quiet. Uh-oh, the chat done got quiet. I don't know what didn't happen. I, I must have said something. I must have said something, but the chat done got quiet. Y'all talk to me. Come on, family. Come on, family. Y'all y'all, talk to me. Talk to me. Talk to me. Don't, 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 don't leave your, your, your brother. I, I hit that. I, you know how sometimes it's like, like you, you're talking and then you look up and everybody gone. <laughs> I know sister Daisy. I know sister Daisy. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just teasing. I'm just teasing. I, I know y'all. I know you there family. I know you all are listening in and, and, and expecting y'all to speak. And he's going to speak through, through the avenue of his word. Through the avenue of his word, family. Ain't, ain't that what we need? Isn't that what we need in the times in which we live? We need truths. No matter hard, no matter how hard or, or how difficult those truths are for us to handle. Come on. Let's let's keep reading. Let's read what he says. Let's read what Yeshua says. Let's, let's read his word. It says, I'm in verse nine right now, family. He says, provide neither gold nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, nor yet staves. He says, for the workman is worthy of his meat. Now watch this. 
And whatsoever city or town you shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy, and there abide till ye go thence. And when ye come into a house, salute it. And if that house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. So he's telling them, when you go out in Israel and you come upon a house and you're speaking the word and they receive you, salute it, salute that house, right? Now watch this, but he says, but if they won't, well, he says, let me go, go back. It says, and when you salute it, um, verse 12, and when you come into the house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. Okay, but if it not be worthy, let your peace return to you. Now watch this. Look at verse 14. Look at verse 14, family. And who whosoever shall not receive you, this is Matthew 10 for those coming in right now. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, nor hear your words. I'm going to say it again. Nor hear your words. What words? Your words of truth, your words of salvation. Hear the words of the gospel message. He says, when you depart out of that house or city, shake the dust off your feet. So he's saying, when you speak a word, when you engage, when you come upon someone's house, when you come upon somebody and you are sharing with them the love and what is love? Love is the father. And what is the father? He is our blessed hope through his son, Yeshua. When you're sharing that with people and when you're sharing truth with them and they receive it or even willing to listen. So you got to ask yourself, are, are the people that I engage with, are they willing to listen to the words of truth? Are they willing to receive me? And if they reject you, guess what? If you're rejected, you should praise Yah. If you are rejected, it is okay. We talked about this a while ago, but we got to be very careful of being so agreeable and so pleasant that we have a problem when people reject us. Rejection is okay, family. Let me let me say that out here in Israel. Rejection is okay. As a matter of fact, it should be anticipated. It should be expected that some are going to reject the words which you give them. The words of life, the words of peace, the words of hope that comes through Yeshua HaMashiach. Let's keep reading. Let's keep reading because there's it's, it's a lot more here that we need to take away. I'm going to move towards... Um, I'm going to move down a little bit, family, for the sake of time. So we know that persecution in, in this next division, he talks about various persecutions that they should expect. And we should expect persecution. As I said a moment ago, rejection. Uh, we should ex expect that. We should expect to be falsely accused. We should expect these things to happen in these times if we're, if we're giving forth the truth of Yeshua. Now, let's do this. Let's look at verse number. Let's drop all the way down, family, for the sake of time. Let's drop down to verse number 20. I'm going to drop all the way to 27. Verse number 27. Matter of fact, 26 is a good place. We start here. 26. I'm in Matthew 10, 26. It says, fear them not, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and hid that shall not be known. What I tell you in darkness, that speak ye in the light, and what ye hear in the ear, that preach ye on the housetops. Fear not them which kill the body, but are able to kill and but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him that is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Let me go back. Let me go back. Yeshua's commands to his disciples was to go to the children of Israel. And he told them there's going to be some that receive you and that's some not going to be uh, that's some that are not going to receive you. And he told them to expect persecution. 
Now, do individuals persecute people who are pleasant and agreeable? Not usually. Not saying that you can't be persecuted. Matter of fact, most people who would be considered nice or pleasant or agreeable, those people many times get taken advantage of. Somebody say amen. P people who are or have kind of just that inclination of being agreeable and being nice, those people many times get taken advantage of. And Yeshua is telling them there's going to be a clear distinction. There's going to be a clear line that's going to be drawn as you're out amongst the people. And that's going to cause some even of you to be persecuted. Some of you are going to, going to experience some things. It's really, really important, family, that we understand. And what is the purpose of this? As we're getting into alignment and getting into the alignment with the will of Yah and the will of the Father, as we're getting into alignment, it's going to impact your relationships. Some of our relationships need to be shaken. See, we're coming in a, in, in a season where we're going to have to make some decisions for Yah or for uh, some earthly relationships. Some of our earthly relationships are going to have to be cut off. Some relationships are going to have to be cut off in the name of the Father. Some relationships are going to have to be cut off. It could be associates. It could be people that you find yourself around, maybe in the work environment. Sometimes you need to separate yourself and show forth your set apartness. That needs to be visible. That needs to be visible. Your set apartness. Family, listen to me. Your set apartness needs to get people's attention. People need to people need to see your good works and glorify the Father in heaven. And what I mean by glorify is they ought to see something and be like, something is going on that's unnatural with that brother or with that sister. If nobody can say that about you, family, if nobody can describe that you are someone who is marching to a different beat, if no one can describe you as someone who is moving according to a different standard, that is a problem. That's a problem. We got our beloved brother in the chat. Brother Wellington, if you got some words, please. Shabbat Shalom, brother. Great to see you. Share, Shabbat share Shalom, with us family. your thoughts and comments, brother. Shabbat Shalom. Absolutely. Uh, great topic. And um, this is one of those things that we need to remember, keep in mind that um, <laughs> I, I have so much to, to speak on, but I'm going to try and keep it short. So um, just to, as a quick summation based off of the uh, this week and all, all the craziness with the um, with the uh, eclipse, I, I looked at that eclipse as it's this was a message directly from the most high that we were supposed to try to align ourselves with and stay aligned with his son the same way his son is aligned with him because that's what an eclipse is it's I when mean, two yeah. bodies are essentially aligned with one another and they to the point that they no longer are two but you only see one the son when he walked on this earth always looked like the father we are called to look like the son as you already stated not once in scripture do we even see the word nice the last thing any of us can actually say is that the most high is nice <laughs> that is not a characteristic uh that we see in scripture Amen. we see that he is a loving elohim we also see that he's a just elohim we know that he's going, to, that he's allowing all of this to occur to us to get to essentially prepare us for our responsibilities that we will be inheriting in the kingdom. And none of that is nice. It's, it's not nice that people are going to wind up being thrown into Sheol and the lake of fire. Um, none of that's nice. 
judgment is not a nice thing, but it's a necessary thing. And we have to have that mindset of not going based off of just our emotions. You know, that's the heart. And Jeremiah 17 and 9 says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who could know it? So why, you know, don't stop, don't live your lives focused on the niceties. Rather, look more towards what is righteous, because that's what's going to essentially inherit the kingdom. Not our niceties. Just wanted to share that because um, excellent topic. On uh, you know, this is something that it's a challenge. Um, I, I'm not saying that we should not be kind to one another, but don't let your kindness get to the point that you are inactive for the Most High, because then you're breaking the first commandment. Because now your kindness just became an Elohim not something that you want to do i'm sure a lot of people have never thought of it from that perspective all praises to yah very well said brother all praises to yah mm -hmm. you know even and if you would hang just for a moment brother wellington because i love to hear your comment on this because i was reflecting on this if you see a baby walking towards a busy intersection and about mm -hmm. to walk into a street are you going to be concerned about being nice and how you pull that? You're going to do whatever it takes. If it means I break your arm to mm -hmm. pull you back into safety, I'll be willing to break your arm if it means you coming back to safety for me to pull you away from danger. I think about that, an image like that, when I think about how sometimes, and I'm, t I'm, I'm speaking to me, Brother Wellington, how sometimes I, I, I'm I not as straightforward with this truth as I need to be with people who the Father has brought in my space to share this gospel with, to share this truth with, to be more straightforward, more direct. And that's why it gets to your point about aligning with the sun so that it, it, it you are li literally appearing to be one. That's that's what he's sharing. He's sharing with me. The truth is erect the truth is straight people the spirit of yah is going to is going to do the work inside of people but i can't be concerned or to your point turning those niceties into an elohim i'm 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 sacrificing yah's will for the sake of being pleasant for the sake of being agreeable or or not wanting to rattle the cages Exactly. So, so, so that that to me is what's been on my mind and heart, and it sounds like the people, yourself included, are also experiencing some of these things. All also in in knowing that this is a topic that we need to address in our preparation as we're cleaning house right now, because that's what we're supposed to be doing: getting rid of the leaven, right? Getting rid of all those Elohim's that we would even potentially try to put before the Father. This could be one of them. The this type of mindset. Absolutely. Something to keep in mind, because, you know, I would much rather, as you stated, the babies going out into the middle of the street, I'd much rather break a limb and save its life than to see it completely crushed. You know, I would much rather hurt your feelings because your feelings after a few minutes, you'll get over it. And if it takes even a few hours, a few days, maybe even a few years of me hurting your feelings just to get you save you from an eternity of burning so be it because even there you'll get over it you know even if it takes a few years versus an eternity of you suffering that is true love it's not nice it's necessary well we have brother wellington up let me let's, let's respond to this question if you don't i think both of you should be uh, we'll be able to respond, I think. So, Brother Ben is sharing with us, if you only had a moment or a minute to share truth with someone, what would need to be said? What message is most effective? Now, here's a beautiful part of this question. I'm going to answer this question in two parts. And actually, part of it is answered in the text in which we're reading. And let me show you. Let's leave that question up. Brother, Brother Wellington, if you have a thought, you can share it. I don't, I don't want to go first if, if you would like to have something that's burning on your spirit. But part of your the answer to this question is in this text right now. And then I will share 
some nuggets of truth um, directly answering this question. But let me show you right here where it says um, one moment. It says, okay, here we go. Verse, verse. let me go back up to verse number 19-ish, somewhere around verse 19. Okay, you see where it says here, my brother Ben, that it says some of you all are going to be delivered up. And it says, but when they deliver you up, take no thought or how or what ye shall speak. For it will be given to you in that same hour what you shall speak. So it's not necessarily formulaic in my response. And I'm going to answer this question. The Ruach of Elohim will, will use your mouth to give the word necessary in that 30 seconds or that minute or however long you have. But the truth of the matter is that Yeshua as the only way to eternal life needs to be presented clearly and straightforward, whatever your thoughts are in your engagement is with Yeshua. So first of all, who is Yeshua to you? If they can answer that question specifically, who is Jesus Christ? Who is Yeshua to you? Their response will let you know specifically that Yeshua is the only way to experience eternal life with the father. Those are just quick things, nuggets that you want to express to someone. If you only have a moment, if the spirit is leading you to give a word, uh, a, a, a word of truth to someone, if you only had a few seconds, but knowing that in, in, in some instances, the spirit might lead you to a specific, particular passage or a particular testimony. Cause I tell you what, I can give my testimony in a, in, in just a few seconds. And I can let them know that if he did it for me, he can do it for you. Bless you, brother. Bless you, sister. And he, and he could be in that moment just planting a seed. Because some will plant, some will water. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, if if I had uh, um, only a minute to share um, truth, I would immediately quote Ecclesiastes uh, 12, 13 through 14. Let us hear the whole conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. And God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. And if you give that and say, tell them that the truth of the matter, couple that with the redemption that we receive through our, our Mashiach, I, I say um, that should be enough. And I do love, love, love what Mama C said in regards to um, the, sh the focus, not necessarily being on sharing the truth, but representing the most high. That is essential, is essential. Again, it, t it ties right back to us looking just like him. Amen. You, you, you know what? Uh, I couldn't agree with you more, uh, Brother Wellington, specifically on this comment about them seeing Yah in you in that moment or that glimpse of time that you have um, those few moments, you know, that there, there's been times where I've had, it's almost like an elevator moment. Has, has anybody ever had like an elevator moment where you only have a few, a few seconds. Yep. And, that, and, and there's been times where literally all I've shared with them is that they are seen, they are loved and they have a father that wants a connection and a relationship with you. And that comes through Yeshua, just somebody hearing words of life, words of light because some people are sitting in darkness and and sometimes just that penetrating light of who yah is because he is light so just letting them know that he desires a connection and a relationship with them he loves them he sees them sometimes people just want in a moment to know that they're seen just to be just to be seen like i'm i'm not alone here i do have a some there is there is there my creator knows where i am right now and i'm not forgotten that can also be encouraging in just a few moments as well amen very edifying brother very yeah, edifying. i just wanted to share that um uh, i'm gonna drop down now amen um, brother 
Thanks again for having me up here. Of course. Shabbat shalom. Love you, brother. Thank you. Shalom, brother. So, family, let me share one more piece with you, and then we are going to uh, prepare to wrap up here. Yeshua says here, think not that I come to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword. I'm come to set a man at variance against father, daughter, against mother, against the daughter-in-law, against the mother-in-law. A man's foes shall be of his own household. Verse 37 will be the final one. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Family, let's meditate in our seat because we're in preparation season, family. For all of those that are here on the live stream, those that are here on demand, we are in a season of preparation. We are preparing to meet Yah at his appointed time. The Moed, the Moed of Elohim is upon us and we must prepare. We must prepare our minds. We must prepare our hearts. We must prepare our body. There is a there is a behavior and a character that Yah wants to show us. He wants to build within us. You know, if we're going to be like him, if we're going to align our lives to him, like that plumb line, there are some decisions that we're going to have to make, family. And we're going to be in prayer for you. And please be in, let's be in prayer with each other during this season that we make the difficult choices, make the difficult choices that bring your glory. Hallelujah. Family, let's just for a moment, because it's on my heart, let's just for a moment take about a minute or so to look. Hopefully we've been, no, we've been learning We've been learning and growing here. We're just going to take take just a few minutes just to put it up to reflect. Have, have, have you all have you all been, you know, from time to time, maybe not uh, as much as you would like, but if time to time taking a look at this Hebrew, getting an understanding, uh, put in the chat family. If you all have, have, have been uh, have, have been learning, have, have been have been blessed by understanding our culture, our language, particularly Hebrew. You know, it's, it's, it's been a blessing, family. Uh, what we're going to do is because we're really short on time today is I, I just wanted to put this up just to remind us. This is just a picture of reminder to continue learning, continue sharpening your skills, uh, use your um, use your resources. We've shared many resources through the Blue Letter Bible. We've shared many resources as well, different links and things like that. Use your resources practice, practice, practice. Next week, we're going to actually start with a Hebrew reading specifically of um, the model prayer given to us by Yeshua. We're going to start there. We're going to start there next week as we go into the lesson. So we're going to begin with this on next week. But I hope that you all have been, uh, been using your resource. This is one that we found. Matter of fact, let me drop this actual document. It's an image uh, that I found is really clear. So I'm just going to drop this in the chat for your family. Uh, it's just a picture uh, of uh, it has the obviously the script on the top. It's got the uh, transliteration uh, in the middle and then the English words on the bottom. It's uh, it's really great. Oh, what a blessing, Sister Nina. Nina says that uh, I almost got the whole thing. <laughs> Uh, whole fam having the Alabet song memorized. Blessing, blessing. All praises to Yah. What a blessing. What a blessing. Well, family, uh, again, thank you so much for being here. We do have a few administrative items we want to address before we close here today. So let's address a few things, family, uh, before, before we go. So we want to first of all share this. For those of you that have not heard, 
2444 Ready Ministry will be having a uh, in-person gathering for Shavuot uh, this set apart season. Uh, we will have a, a gathering during Shavuot. Uh, the QR code is there. Uh, details about the location and time are forthcoming. We're going to be sending this out via email. If you would like to participate with this ministry, if you would like to participate in Shavuot, we're having a baptismal service. Uh, we are going to back. If you've never been baptized, if you uh, maybe were baptized in Christianity, but you would like to be baptized into your into your new life under your renewed uh, life in Israel as you've embraced the covenant. Uh, uh, if you'd like to do that, uh, we encourage you to join us. It's going to be in the Houston area. Again, the dates there on the screen, June 16th. Grab that QR code. Uh, let us know. Uh, we're making preparations right now. We're finalizing uh, some of those preparations, particularly on the venue. We're, we're locking down some things because we want it to be a very excellent event. We want it to be. An, uh, oh, and by the way, uh, the this will not be uh, this will not be uh, a uh, a baptismal in like a pool. We're going to do it in natural water. So in a spring or a lake. So. It, just so you know, family, it's not going to be one of them, one of them uh, baptismal pools or a pool. It's going to actually be a natural flowing stream or lake. Uh, we've got a few places identified and we're looking forward to sharing the details. But let us know uh, if you're interested. Uh, we're going to put the form up every week to let our family know that that is forthcoming. Hopefully you all can um, can join us. If you can make preparation to be here in the Houston area, that would be fantastic. Let us know. That uh, just if you would say a few things about the website, just so the people are aware of kind of what's going on. Uh, for those that are unaware, we have uh, revamped, completely revamped uh, the 2444 Ready Ministries website. And I'm going to let dad talk a little bit about that before we prepare to pray and close. And as dad is sharing this, if you have prayer requests, drop those prayer requests in the chat so we can pray before we close out for you. Dad, uh, I'll turn it over to you to talk about the website. Yes, um, the the revised um, website is completed, uh, but it's it's taking longer to get it um, to show live um, in here in the United States. My understanding that it's already showing up in some other countries, but why it's so slow coming up here? I'm not sure why that is. We're still still waiting on it. Everything's been done. I guess it's just a timing issue. Uh, this is the first time we, uh, our ministry, have experienced switching over to a new site, so we don't have all the experiences of what it takes to get that done. But we do know that everything that needs to be done has been completed, and we're just waiting on time. So we just, I guess, now we just hold on to patience, just being patient. <laughs> it's challenging, especially for us that those of us that are involved in the ministry. It's very challenging for us, but we just have to be patient. We thought it would have been up. I don't know, a couple of weeks ago, um, we run into a couple of snags. We've got past all that. So everything has been completed for its issues. Now it's just a matter of a bit showing up. So any day now, the new site should be up. And we thank you for your patience and uh, uh, seek your forgiveness for um, the timeliness of it. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, family. We know that we have... Uh... We have mercy being extended to us <laughs> from the family, but we we just want to keep y'all informed, let you know what's going on. Uh, as we once, always, once it is up, we would love to hear back from you all. Um, there may be some things that uh, we may have not thought to. to add. We we try to be as complete as we can uh, with the site. Um, there may be some some ideas that we just had not have not crossed our mind. So we would love to hear back from you, or if you just like what you see, we'd love to hear that. So look, give us some feedback. And there'll be links on the site where you just click on it and you make your comments and it'll come right to our email. Hallelujah. Uh, before we close, as always, uh, we want to thank y'all for the opportunity to be a blessing to uh, the children. And so 144 Kids is coming up next. Those of you that are new uh, to uh, this particular ministry, we are in collaboration and partnership with multiple ministries here in the States, in Canada and the United Kingdom. And uh, all of our children are, are being blessed. So if you need information about how to uh, engage and get your children involved in learning biblical principles, Torah principles, 
uh, Hebraic principles of our faith, uh, you will not um, you will not be disappointed. Uh, right now, the children are learning about the set apart feast. If you can believe this, could you imagine if we had this knowledge at that age? Wow. If we had this knowledge and this love for Yah to embrace him according to his commands at this age, our children are being blessed. So take it, take advantage of the opportunity. Email us uh, to the email on the screen. Uh, the ministry uh, team will definitely respond back in a timely, fa uh, timely fashion. Uh, if you want to get a preview to what's going on with the children's ministry, we encourage you, if you're not already subscribed to the Kids Action Bible Show YouTube channel, do that, family. Go look at some of the uh, the recap videos that are on the Kids Action Bible Show's YouTube channel. They give you a taste of what the children are receiving. So uh, please uh, don't miss that opportunity for your, uh, your children uh, or share this information. Uh, with those who have children uh, that uh, would benefit. Oh, I'm going to uh, let's address that. We might even have some of our ministry partners on. So we have a sister here uh, who says that she emailed but never got links. Uh, sister, if you would email us, email 2444ready at gmail.com and let us relay so that the ministry team can follow back up to make sure you get the links ASAP. So sister that just put that out, email 2444ready at gmail.com so that we can relay your email to the ministry and make sure something uh, has not gotten lost. We apologize for the delay because you should and have it, gotten. And it might not be a, a bad idea to send another email because they are pretty, they're pretty efficient with. Correct. Out. Yeah, so correct. I'm not sure what what has slipped through the crank, but um, just 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 know that they they have they have really been on their game. Uh, it, it I, will, I've, been, I've been participating with the children's ministry, and we have some great phenomenal people uh, working absolutely. with that ministry. So it may have just slipped through the crank. So just send another email to them as well. So so we already got uh, one of our uh, 144 kids ministry uh, leaders already letting her know in the chat they're going to check. Because one of our ministry leaders for uh, 144 Kids is, is in the stream, and she's right. going to check for you, sister. So no worries. We're going to get you connected ASAP. Amen. So family, with that being said, we're going to pray out Shabbat Shalom to you and uh, looking forward to uh, the Most High bringing us back at the next appointed time. Family, make preparation. By the time we meet again, family, by the time we meet again, you should already have your lamb. You should already start getting your preparation, getting your house, your house should start be getting in order. Unleavened bread is right around the corner. So make your preparation, family. We love you. Shabbat shalom to you. And um, we'll close out in prayer. Let's bow. And she says she found it, son. Hallelujah. So yeah. sister, we are, we are addressing you right now. All praises to Yah. Blessing to our children. Let's pray, family. Thank you, Father, for today's stream. Thank you for our family of faith. We thank you that you are calling us to be more and more like your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Father, give us the wisdom. Give us the knowledge. Give us the love for your people and for your in love for a lost and dying world. Father, help us to have the compassion that Yeshua had. But Father, help us to, through our compassion, do whatever is necessary behave and act and, and do what you've required us to do, Father, so that lives can be saved. Father, help us, Father, to be the light, to be the uh, the a reflection of your image in this world. Father, we love and appreciate you and help us as decisions have to be made, tough decisions have to be made within our lives to make the choices that you have called us to make. Father, we bless you. We honor you. We thank you for 2440 Ministries. We thank you for every man, woman, and child that is on this stream right now on demand. Those that are watching, uh, that, that are watching live, and those that are watching on demand. Father, we pray a blessing over every household, and that you would bless all the preparation of the saints right now. All the preparation of the saints as we prepare to meet with you. We ask that you would bring us back at the appointed time, Father, uh, next Shabbat. Uh, according to your will. We bless you and honor you. As we go forth, let us all go forth in the shalom of our Elohim. We bless you, Father. And in this, uh, we pray all this in the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. And so be it. Shabbat Shalom, family.
Amen. Shabbat Shalom. We love you. Shabbat Blessings. Shalom.